Hey lovelies, I'm back with another great episode of our Dinner Made Easy series for you. As you know, I've been sharing easy weeknight dinner ideas for the last month or so. If you haven't checked out the rest of the videos in this playlist, I highly recommend you do. They are really, really delicious and nutritious, easy weeknight dinner ideas. And today's ideas all happen in a single sheet pan. What could be easier than that? Basically, you just lay all your ingredients out, into the oven they go, and what you end up with is a dinner you can feel really, really good about. For my first sheet pan supper today, I am going to show you an incredibly delicious, lightened up version of chicken parmesan with some roasted zucchini on the side. I'm starting by chopping my zucchini into basically little coin shapes, and I'm just gonna toss those in some olive oil, some salt, some pepper, and some Italian seasoning. I will fully admit I am cheating with some store-bought Italian seasoning, but if you want to make your own, I have a recipe for that. You can just click the thumbnail here. We're going to give those all a good toss and then pour our zucchini out onto our baking sheet. Next, it is time to prep our chicken in the very same way. What you'll notice though is that I'm actually not breading my chicken. In a traditional chicken parmesan, you would bread your chicken before you bake it. But like I said, I'm trying to do a bit of a lightened up version. So I've just got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm going to season them with some olive oil, salt, pepper, Italian seasoning. But it is really important that we get both sides, my friends, because let's be honest, we eat both sides of the darn chicken. Am I right? Then we are going to lay these beautiful chicken breasts out. Just gonna arrange them among our beautiful zooks. Whoa, that one's trying to escape. And then into the oven, this yumminess goes at 375 for between 15 and 20 minutes, or just until that chicken breast starts to get a little golden and cook through. Basically, now it's time to take this to chicken parmesan greatness. We're gonna do that by adding some lovely tomato sauce, some mozzarella cheese, and of course, some freshly grated Parmesan cheese because it wouldn't be chicken Parmesan without the Parmesan. All right, back into the oven these go for another five minutes or so or until our chicken has reached an internal temp of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. When these beauties come out of the oven, they are bubbly and delicious. I like to garnish them really simply with some freshly chopped basil. There you have it, my friends. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Next up, I've got a really comforting, sweet and savory main dish that I think you guys are going to adore. They're my maple glazed pork chops and I like to serve them with some Brussels sprouts, some butternut squash and some chopped apple. The thing about pork is that it's naturally quite salty, which is why it lends itself so beautifully to sweet things like applesauce or maple syrup. Really, really yummy. To marinate my pork chops, I'm just gonna transfer them into a zipper bag because I find that is the best way to get them well coated. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to my incredible maple marinade. It's basically just a matter of mixing some maple syrup with some Dijon mustard, some fresh thyme leaves, and some minced garlic. I'm gonna season that with some salt and some pepper. Once that is all whisked together, we are going to pour it over our pork chops like so. And then we are gonna give this all a good zhuzh. You wanna make sure every single inch of those pork chops is covered in this mixture. I'm gonna pop those in the refrigerator for 10 or 20 minutes, but if I'm being serious, overnight is always better. And in the meantime, I'm going to turn my attention to my produce. I'm starting by roughly chopping up an apple. To that, I'm adding some Brussels sprouts that have been trimmed and cut in half. I'm also adding some nice chunks of butternut squash. Now, if you're anything like me and you don't feel like peeling a butternut squash after a long day at work, you go ahead and buy the pre-chopped kind at the supermarket. It really does work just as well. Once we have all of that in our bowl, we're just gonna season it with some olive oil, some salt, and some pepper, give it a good toss, and then pour it out on our baking sheet. We're gonna pop these in the oven at 375 and give them about a 10 minute head start on our pork chops, because our pork chops are quite thin and they are going to cook really fast. As you can see, everything's getting a little more tender. My Brussels sprouts are starting to get bright green, which is always my favorite sign. That means it is time to arrange these beautiful friends. And because we love our marinades, I'm pouring it all over. This, my friends, is where the real magic happens. 
back into the oven. These go until the veggies are nice and tender and those pork chops are fully cooked. How beautiful does this dish look when it's done? I like serving it with a nice fresh green salad. And I have to tell you, this is a great way to get your kids into eating their veggies. That maple Dijon glaze just makes them way over the top delicious. Finally, never before have you seen a steak dinner that is more simple than what I'm about to show you. It all starts with some gorgeous asparagus. I've just trimmed off the ends of my asparagus and arranged them in a single layer on my baking sheet. I'm going to season them with a little olive oil, some salt, some pepper, a sprinkle of garlic powder, and give them a good rub so they are evenly seasoned. And then what I'm going to do is actually pop a roasting rack on top of that asparagus. So we're gonna cook our asparagus on the bottom and then we are going to arrange our beef on top. Today I am using some lovely ribeye steaks which are beautifully marbled and have a lot of fat content in them. You could really do this with any kind of steak you wanted to. I'm going to prepare these with a drizzle of olive oil, some salt, some pepper, and a little more garlic powder. And then of course we are going to season the other side the very same way. And then I'm going to place them on top of that rack. I'm guessing you can see where I'm going with this. The idea is that the steak cooks in all of that beautiful fat drips down to season that asparagus and things get really delicious. Now the secret to success with this recipe is using an extremely hot oven. You want your oven to be at least 450 degrees Fahrenheit before you put your steak in. I like to flip it once during cooking to make sure it sears evenly on both sides. And what you end up with is one seriously delicious dinner. Seriously? You sear your steak? Yeah, got it. All right. I hope you guys will give these tasty recipes a try and if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo because I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind that there is an entire playlist dedicated to dinners made easy. All you need to do is check out the details in the description box below. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more dinner deliciousness where this came from.